three, two, one. Hi, I'm Reed. This is Crowland Publishing. Welcome back to part three of our superheroes in Fantasyland. And today we are going to do how you can take super powered characters and we work them into a fantasy milieu. In the first uh, episode, we talked about the aesthetics and we talked about what needs to change in your initial world building. Secondly, we talked about how you can do street level heroes, and now we're going to do what super powered characters would look like in a in a D and D world, and why that's different from high level characters, and just some examples of how you might want to set up characters and adventures and stuff like that. So let's get to it. So the first thing that we need to talk about is what actually is a superpower within a D&D campaign because it's not just a high level campaign. You're not a superhero if you're playing a 17th level wizard. You're a 17th level wizard. What a superpower needs to be is something that is by and large unique to that particular PC. Two people might have the same power or they might be evil opposites of each other or good opposites of each other. They might have complementary Wonder Twin style powers, but generally speaking, your power is unique to you. Your power set is unique to you. A 17 level wizard, I said before, is a 17 level wizard. And that's true because even in a world where magic is vanishingly rare, it is still within the context of the game rules to have wizard powers, cleric powers, divine magic, to have gods pop out, to have druids turn into bears and stuff like that. That is part of the assumed setting of D&D. Superpowers are outside of that traditional class system, that traditional rule system. They are something that is specific to the individual PCs. It's something that says about their character as well. That's important. Wonder Woman uh, has the, the perfect muscular body and has the, the fair face and the links to the gods because she comes out of Greek mythology. It says something about her character. Thor's thunderstorms and powers are, are violent because he's a violent man. Wolverine is a vicious killer. He has vicious killer's powers that are idiosyncratic to the individual character. And that is not something that happens within regular D&D. And that is part of why... I actually don't think D&D is necessarily the best way to run a game like this. I would use a superhero system, but we'll get to that in another video. So what are superpowers? We know how they affect individual PCs. What are they conceptually? So conceptually, powers are out of context. They're not just a part of the regular rules. They're individual to the PC, and they are acquired through extraordinary circumstances. And what you have to do here is to have a look at common causes of superhumanity within the comics and the movies and TV shows and give them a fantasy makeover. So a very, very common one is technology. Maybe you made the technology yourself and you're a genius. Maybe it was just gifted to you. Iron Man is a classic box of scraps. John Henry Irons, the man who saw Superman die and decided he needed to help. So he built himself an incredible um, super suit. Exo Manowar, I think he finds he's in an alien spaceship. So I don't necessarily think that technology is the best way to go in a superhero world. But I would love to see someone who is a genius of alchemy. Someone who has learned incredible blacksmithing powers from the Elden races. But that being said, if a PC came to me and said, no, I want my powers to be specifically technological, no big deal. Second is... You were gifted with incredible powers by a supernatural or godlike entity. Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel, Green Lantern, Silver Surfer. Within a D&D context, this is very, very simple. The gods. You've got the gods. They're already there. It might not be a god. It might be an archangel. It might be a, an archfiend. It might be a fae. And they might have a similar relationship with you as a warlock's patron. Remember, the Green Lanterns are always clashing with the Elders of the Universe. Silver Surfer has punched Galactus in his giant face a thousand times. This is a fun basis for a PC. Everyone likes having a dad who's going to wag their finger at you. The next is your abilities are a factor of your race. X-Men, Superman, Lobo. Your birthright is incredible powers. 
very, very easy within D&D because you already have races as quite separate from um, humans. So it's very, very easy for you to say, well, I am of an ancient race of earthbound angels. I am a tiefling turned up to 11. My demon blood grants me enormous powers. My dragon blood gives me enormous powers. I come from an ancient race that explored the plains and out there we transformed and now we've come back to the world. Fantastic PC concept there because you've turned against your evil invading race. Three, two, one. And the gods. You're a god, you're a demigod. You're of the blood divine royal. Useful world building technique there. If you've got these incredible races, what effect have they had on the world? What effect are they going to have on the world? Easy peasy, squeeze a lemon. It's just a race. And the last most common one is weird phenomenon. Fantastic Four get hit by rays. Spider gets bitten by a radioactive. Spider, I think I can remember. Flash gets hit by chemicals and briefly in a probably the world's worst retcon in the 1950s, a wizard. Something happens to you. Maybe you sort it out. Maybe it was just a freak accident. Maybe it was a side effect of something that you were trying to do. Within fantasy, maybe you were close to a god when the god died and the powers washed over you. Maybe you made a special alchemical mixture and you drank it and it all went tits up. Possibly you were bitten by a weird demonic animal and the venom from hell transformed you. Something happened that gave you these powers. Maybe you were not happy about it. Maybe they have terrible, terrible side effects. But whatever happened happened and changed you permanently now you are a fantasy superhero so there we go now we've got some ideas of where your fantasy superhero might come from what they might look like what their background is now this is a narrative gaming channel i'm not very good at rules i'm just not if you really really want to go and have a look at how you could start up a superhero there's a guy called Tulok the barbarian and he is just aces i love him but mainly DD is a game about managing resources you have diminishing levels of abilities to handle situations, but superheroes are about having a flexible but finite tool set. Another reason why I'd shy away from using superhero rules. But let's talk a little bit about how you might make a, um, a superhero, a fantasy superhero character within the D&D rules. So firstly, and this is very, very simple, let's say that superheroes and their powers are built around a primary theme and a sub theme now you might have skills and other stuff to uh, differentiate your character but essentially primary and secondary theme batman's theme is darkness night stealth his sub themes are investigation and incredible violence superman's theme is hmm it's a little bit more complicated isn't it I would think that within a fantasy context, his theme is Solar God. And his sub-themes are his incredible senses. And I wouldn't say that his role-playing is in part of this. I wouldn't say that his incredible compassion is a sub-theme of his powers. That is just how he's characterized. Ben Grimm, the thing. His theme, his primary theme is giant rock monster. His sub-theme is strength. Ben Grimm can take any amount of punishment, never ever give up, but he's not as strong as the Hulk and he's not as strong as the Thor. Hulk, good example, incredible strength, and his sub-theme is monstrous rage. He needs to be angry to work. Wonder Woman, her main theme is, um, I don't know, how would you describe it? Um, superpowered athleticism, and her sub-themes are her magical panoply. I would say her, her magical abilities and her magical tools is what how I would, generally speaking, describe Wonder Woman. So I would do primary theme and sub-theme because it seems a little bit closer to the actual the superhero source material. But you might want to just say, okay, you've got 10 points and that means 10 powers at most. Or you can have powers that are stronger. So say you just want to be super strong, you put 6, 10, whatever points into your abilities if you say you want to be a vampire master of darkness you might say okay well 
your primary theme is vampire, so you want to have three distinct vampire powers. I can turn into a bat, I cannot die, except through a stake through the heart, and I gain super strength from drinking the blood of the living, and my darkness powers are I can make it dark or light. That is a pretty good way to think about just roughly making up a superhero within a fantasy world. I would also use something called, for want of a better word, super stats. Super stats are just contextual and every time you are up against a normal person or non-super monster or anything like that, each super stat is just plus five on a d20. So your super strength of plus one is you just add five. Super strength plus two, add 10. And this would be a way to fine tune the power levels of your game. You increase that or lower it. So super strength might be plus six, plus seven. And very, very quickly, you're going to find that you're getting outside of the scope where a D20 can be useful. Just again, why I would probably not use D&D for this particular kind of game. But it would just be a way to very, very quickly understand how powerful you are and how powerful within the context of the game you are as well. Because if you've got super strength three, everyone knows that you're lifting up tanks and stuff. You know, that's plus 15 on the strength roll. That's very, very strong. If your super strength is plus 10, you're the Hulk, you know, you're lifting up mountains and stuff. And this is a good way to fine tune power levels within the campaign. Everyone knows that Wolverine is a superhuman badass. He mows down ninjas like Moon Knight mows down ketamine, but he can lose to regular weapons. Given enough of them, you can shoot Wolverine to death. Thor, in the meantime, they couldn't even touch him. So super constitution of plus five for Thor would indicate that he's pretty much outside the scope of conventional weapons. Super constitution plus two for Wolverine, he's pretty tough, but not impossible to hurt. From there, I would then probably allow two characters to buy disadvantages and weaknesses. It's such a trope of the of the field. Kryptonite, lead, yellow, whatever. And again, we're also moving away from 5e though. So, And of course, I would use MOOC rules from 4e, which is just how to make your characters look cinematically badass. So all right, so you've got some concepts there for characters. You've got some basic ideas for how you might want to do this within the rules. From there, it's pretty much just a regular D&D game. How did your characters meet? Why do they work together? Are they friends? Is there conflict within the game? Superheroes are typically rife with internal drama and tension and soap opera carry on. If you have a mature, good group, encourage it. Encourage Wolverine thinking that Cyclops is a dick. Keep Thor and keep Iron Man and Captain America having political differences if you like. It's up to you. From there, some things that are very, very specific to the game. Who do you serve? Are you in the service of a king? The only good king who looks to defeat the evil empire? Are you in the service of a god? Are you in the service of an archangel or a demon or a dragon or a giant monster or a plane or something? What do you all serve? Do you all serve it equally and with the same fervor and loyalty? Now for the last thing, adventures. Now this is pretty easy. I am just going to have a look through the Wikipedia entry of the Justice League cartoon from whatever it was, 2000. Oh my god, I'm getting old. And we're going to riff on that and see what adventures we can come up with. So here we go. First episode, Alien Invaders. That brings the uh, team together. Classic. Sea giants come up from the land and are prepared to destroy everything. The gates to the elemental plane open and the fire monsters come through. The demon armada attacks. And that is brings you all together as you individually spot each other and learn to work together. What else have we got? Uh, Aquaman submarine attack. I remember that one. Aquaman. Um, very easy. The king of the tritons decides he's going to get back the land because new cruel water non-breathers. And turns out that he's actually okay, and Ocean Master, his evil brother, is the one who's manipulated him into this. What else have we got? Uh, no, 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 no. Superman Manhunter abducted by extraterrestrial slave traders who pits him against Mongol. That's pretty fun. Who's powerful enough to take a fantasy superhero? Flash and Green Lantern uncover a plot by Gorilla God to destroy Gorilla City. 
I probably wouldn't use gorillas, but someone coming to your superheroes and saying, please help us, something terrible is happening to our magical place. Classic adventure. Also, good way to build up allies for the big end game when Mogadon or Doctor Doom or whoever comes and attacks you. A rogue Amazon named Aresia times up with the supervillains. There you go, redeem a bad guy. Classic superhero. Uh, parallel universe, alternate histories. They're pretty fun, but maybe not for three, two, one. So I just went on like that for a little while. If you go and have a look at any kind of episode guide or issue summary to any kind of superhero storyline, you will be inspired. That's one of the good things about superheroes is that they're pretty easy to come up with plots for. So there's lots of stuff I didn't want to touch, but I think that we've reached kind of the end, aside from one more video on some odds and ends. I think that this is a good way to use this sort of high powered, exciting action adventure genre that people really, really like, that's really, really visual, and to bring it into your D&D campaigns and to freshen them up. I've really enjoyed this series. I hope you did too. Please give me a like. It's good for the algorithms and the subscribe and all the rest of it. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.